My, my name is Gabriel Anzaldi. I will be the first presenter in this session. Thank you very much to all the people assisting to this, this slot. Okay. We are going to present during the, the slot different projects in the framework of the ICT for Water project, uh, cluster, sorry, the ICT for Water cluster. Uh, we think that this is a very good place to present our results because we have been involved in Inspire since the, the beginning in our framework. And my initial presentation we, will be related to the, to the cluster, okay, the, the cluster itself. Uh, let's the presentation, okay. Uh, the, the ICT for cl water cluster uh, for the beginning is is not a, a, a legal entity or a formal uh, organization. We are a, a voluntary based uh, basis or organization. We are several European projects showing together in order to try to share knowledge, experience, outcomes, and improve our, our results all together. Uh, we are very focused in digital water. Okay. We, we we try to deploy our disruptive technologies related to to digital applications, may, mainly all things related to artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, augmented reality, robotics, etc. We try to respond to the big challenge that we have, especially all related to climate change, circular economy, etc. And we have clear the objectives because the objectives are the software development goals. All in, in this framework, we try, we have a lot of projects, a lot of European projects that are working in these kind of things. And we try to group together in a common schema that, which is the, the, that you see in the center of the picture. Okay. If we start explaining, which is the, when the cluster starts, we start working on this in 2012. Okay. We are the, the founders, five sister projects that they start in this idea in 2012. We're starting working to, together in order to try to build this, uh, serving community, uh, around digital water, smart water, and so on. Uh, in the, in the transcore, uh, once the, the time advanced, we had been incorporating several other projects, uh, and we had started to grow in 2015. In 2015, we realized that we can produce bottom up approach, okay, in order to try to contribute, contribute in policy, in technology, in recommendations, roadmaps, and so on. Then we have produced the first roadmap in 2015 and a second roadmap in 2016. One more technological, organizational, uh, uh, business oriented, etc. And because of in 2016 and 17, we have reached a very good quantity of people interested in, in our work. Uh, we have produced in 2019 an action plan. This action plan includes several uh, activities that are performed in a period of time and was approved, was uh, published by the European Commission as an orientation. And now in 2019 and 20, we are working in the implementation of this action plan. Uh, currently, we are more than 50 projects, taking in account the projects that are not active, but we have almost 20 projects, act, active projects. And we are present in, in almost whole uh, countries of Europe, but also in different continents, okay, trying to deploy the solutions and produce common uh, knowledge and understanding and results. If we take a look at the action plan, the action plan has a framework from 2019 to till 2030. I think that when, when we start, we decide this period of time, but now the, the technology is changing very soon. Then we have to adapt very uh, uh, the, the plan to different periods. Okay. And we have uh, incorporated in, in this action plan actions related specifically to interoperability and standardization. Interoperability and standardization was a concern from the beginning of the, uh, of the ICT for water cluster. We are going to present later on a presentation specifically uh, tackling this point because we have a lot of experience. 
Uh, we are going, we, we have another actions related to data sharing. That is the, the initial things that we are calling now data spaces where we are very aligned also like the uh, Inspire as a data space, okay, or Copernicus and, and other data spaces. Our core is smart water. Inside smart water, we include decision support system, recommenders, artificial intelligence, different technologies that are being applied all around the water cycle. We have a specific action for cybersecurity, which is which what we consider very important also, trying to link all the things together. Actor awareness, policy and business models. These last two are very important too, okay? And we have tried to work hard in these, these two things in order to try to provide some conclusions and, and thoughts, okay? Uh, during the last year, we have been collecting a lot of results, a lot of things related all around the water cycle. And for us was very, in the beginning was very complicated to try to put all this information together and try to organize the information in order to find where we, we have to focus, where we have to, how we can find the gaps and so on. Then in last year, we have proposed a reference schema. This reference schema is not a new model, okay? It's not a new model regarding to the water cycles and so on. There is a lot of, uh, information and establish the research on that. But this is a reference schema for us as a cluster in order to organize our projects and try to uh, reach conclusions where we have to focus, okay? Then we have defined water cycle stages, water value change, water types, business and operational activities and technologies. All this schema reflects all these things and we organize it in what we call circularity domains. These circularity domains include different levels and how the water is circulating around this domain, okay? And then we try to organize our projects with this uh, reference schema. Uh, this is very use, was very useful because we, we can find where the projects are concentrated. We can find if there is a, not too much project, for example, tackling cybersecurity, or other things that that we can consider important, and then we can provide feedback in order to improve next steps in regards to foc where the the research or the innovation or the business has to be focused. We have, for example, a, a, a information and statistics related which was which are the 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 technologies that are being applied. And take in mind that we are talking about fifty projects, which mean. Uh, uh, hundreds of partners uh, in from the, from the whole water value chain, considering all the stakeholders. Then we we think that we have a better representative representative scopes of the of our our sector. No, then we can explode all, all this information uh, in order to improve and in order to realize which are the gaps and where we have to focus. Okay. For example, we can analyze one project. In one project, we can say, we can choose this project. We can say in which part of this schema is being applying their, their results. We can choose a particular business activity. This business, business activity can be uh, explained and which are the KPIs related to this business activity, uh, where we can allocate this project inside of the water cycle which technology are, are they using? Where are the pilots? The pilots, uh, the concentration, the, the, the quantity of people that they, they are serving, uh, the coordinates. We have several in, uh, information that we now have organized in order to analyze in a particular, in a specific way for a project, what, or in, in, in a group of projects where we choose, for example, a business activity, we can which are the projects working in that business activity, where they are applying this business activity inside of the circularity domains, which are the technologies that they are deploying, and so on. This is a very powerful tool for us in order to try to analyze the future, okay? Analyze where we have to focus and where we have to, where we need to put emphasis, okay? Yeah, in this line... One minute now. 
Okay, then I will go fast. In this time we have, we realize that we need help and we, we need uh, action group leaders for all these tasks, uh, actions that I refer in the action group leaders. We have been building synergies across the projects working and with other organizations that are similar to, uh, to us, like the Bridge Horizon project in the framework of smart cities and we work together we have been sent to the, the cluster building teams in order to tackle, for example, the COVID situation right now, where we join together and produce something that was a winner in the EU versus virus hackathon. And all these things has been done thanks to the synergy that we are able to create and the, the common work that we perform thanks to the cluster. Thank you, Gabriel. Thanks a lot. Thanks. And I have to apologize. I was uh, stupidly speaking for five minutes to introduce you the topics. And then I suddenly realized I was not online anymore. So it's really, okay. just, <laughs> I spoke to myself for a few minutes. Okay, I will not uh, start again to present. Gabrielle has done the introduction about the cluster already. And it's very good. I hope you had an insight on what these projects are working on. But now we will listen to more specifically to a few of them as uh, their experiences on the data management, on interoperability, on artificial intelligence, and all these enablers for the digital transformation of the water sectors are really interesting to us. And it's what we are doing this afternoon together. So I pass the floor immediately to the first project. After each presentation, don't hesitate to ask questions, either in the chat or you just raise your hands and uh, we will take the, uh, give you the floor to ask the question to the speakers. Uh, very few minutes each because we don't have so much time, but I hope to, to be able to let you interact with them as much as possible. So I pass the floor to Dimitra from Greece uh, with the Diana project. Dimitra, we can, cannot hear you. We can see your okay. presentation. Can you hear me now? Yes, good. Ah, thank you. So thank you for uh, inviting us to make the presentation. And uh, thank you for the great intro. I think it is indeed very important what is happening right now um, and how we are taking advantage of the various technologies and the data uh, to address various issues that we have um, in the water related sector. Um, <clears throat> Diana project, I will talk about Diana project, which is uh, which finished actually last year. Uh, but it is a project that I think that addresses a very specific um, part of the water problem. So uh, I am Dimitra Perperidou, for those that were not here in the introduction, and I am representing Agraps, which is a, a small SME that is located in Thessaloniki. Uh, and I will talk to you about the detection and the graded assessment of non-authorized water abstractions using Earth observation data. So, um, Give me a moment. Um, so I always start with a question that I think it's uh, it's very impactful uh, in the sense that we all know that uh, water is a valuable resource, but do we really know uh, how much water do we have and how we use it? So uh, a metaphor that we use is that if you take all the water in the planet and roll it up in a sphere, you will have a ping pong ball, let's say, and 97% of that water is salt water. So we cannot actually use it. We cannot drink it. We cannot irrigate our crops with it. Uh, from the 99 that is remaining, um, uh, from the 1% that is remaining, 99 is fro frozen. So uh, what is actually we are left? What we are actually left with is just 1%, and from that available water. Uh, we use it for uh, various purposes. So we use it in an urban level, for example, for washing our clothes or our cars or watering our gardens. We use another 22% in, in industrial uses. So for fabricating, processing, washing, we have a 70%. Uh, and I know it's usually 
not very known, but uh, the agricultural domain is using a lot of water because irrigation is a very, very common practice. So yes, 70% is used uh, in agriculture. Agriculture accounts for approximately a quarter of the 182 billion cubic meters of water extracted every year in Europe. So we are talking about a very substantial amount and it's used predominantly in irrigation since it's a very common practice in agriculture. At the same time though, irrigation is also a major cause for non-authorized water or over abstraction. So we are talking about the use of larger volumes of water uh, than it's officially permitted uh, or even available. We're talking also about sustainability issues because if you don't have enough water and you're over abstracting, you're making, um, uh, you're, you're damaging uh, the environment and uh, the whole ecosystem. So uh, there are also though uh, other parameters that come into place when we are discussing about water. So um, for example, we have phenomena such as droughts. If you think that from 2006 to 2010, on average, 15% of the EU territory and 70% of the EU population have been affected by droughts each year, you can understand that we are talking about a phenomenon that it's something that will come again and again and that we will be um, against that phenomenon in the future as well. If we combine all those problems <laughs> and <laughs> Uh, I mean, if we combine the, the water uh, limitations that we have, the phenomena of droughts, we will see that handling water is difficult in any case. But on top of those problems, we have more practical problems on the way that we uh, monitor the situation. I mean that we have to go in, into the field to, to detect the abstractions and um, monitor what is going on. So we cannot we need people, resources, time, uh, money, and authorities need to, ens to ensure that they have those. And it's not always easy to do that. <clears throat> so all in all, what we can say is that we do see the, the need for solutions uh, such as Diana and other solutions that we will discuss here today. Because Diana is a commercial platform now and uh, it's uh, comprised from three services. So we have the non-authorized water abstraction detection and monitoring, the drought monitoring and forecasting, and uh, the support of the monitoring of the Water Framework Directive. And uh, we will discuss a little bit later on in the presentation uh, about uh, specifics for its service. So uh, I will be very brief uh, on those parts because I don't have a technical background, so I will explain to, to the best of my knowledge. So in Diana... And also we... you have three minutes left, my dear. Okay, thank you. So in Diana, we use, for the needs of Diana services, we use a number of different data. Uh, here you can see the core categories, let's say. Uh, we have earth observation data, meteorological data, and uh, complementary data. Um, the process that we are following um, is uh, the acquisition of the data and processing to, to storage them and provide the outputs to our users. So uh, we combine uh, different products that we have from the different data sources to provide useful information to the end user. Here you can see the platform, uh, Diana platform. Um, and let's say that you're a water authority that wants to check uh, for illegal abstractions. So you can see the first service, um, the water abstractions. You can log into the platform and you can find out on the first uh, landing on the landing page very useful information such as um, uh, the month that you had the most uh, use of water, um, the um, uh, volume of irrigated areas, the accumulated volume of the water that was used, the non-irrigated areas. But uh, what is more important is uh, that we also provide a visualization on a map. I will get into that uh, in the next slide more. So you can see for different fields, the different water that was used for the different crops, and we can visualize everything on the map. But what we have also done uh, in the Diana platform is that you can make any kind of calculations um, on the fly. So you can create a polygon here and get the results very quickly and on the fly. But the user can also 
choose to uh, visualize the different layers, for example, the layer of the irrigated area and the water rights for and they can see uh, the results and, uh, let's say, the problematic areas. Um, the second service is, uh, of course, um, drought forecasting and monitoring. And uh, the forecast is a six-month period, period forecast. Um, there, are var uh, there are a number of indexes here that we use as well to, to uh, enable uh, the users get the results that they want. And finally, we have the support the water framework directive. <clears throat> As you will see, um, I will not stay here a lot, but it's important to say that we provide high resolution special data and services in support of the water framework directly, directive. Um, and for the UN sustainable development goals. So um, the team behind Diana, as you can see, are various uh, companies uh, from Agrab, so that is from Greece, uh, companies from Spain and organizations that come from Spain, Italy, Romania, Belgium, and Portugal. Um, I'm running through because I want to, to stay just um, one minute in the result that we have seen. So the three pilots that we had uh, and uh, operationally used Diana were in Italy, Spain, and, and uh, Romania. And what our users um, told us as a takeaway message is that they could find differences um, by using Diana that indicated missing water volumes uh, against the ones that were declared by farmers. They detected irregularities um, in the farmers' declarations. They could remotely interpret the vegetation compared with the farmers' declarations again. So we have a very valuable tool uh, against which we can use uh, to, com to, to compare what the, our uh, farmers are saying. And of course, the cross-check was done remotely and uh, the resources that needed to be used were less and less time was dedicated. So this is it for me. I hope I'm <laughs> within my time. <laughs> Yes, you are perfectly in time and it allows us first to apologize myself because I forgot the slide of uh, Paul uh, of Gabriel, but we will do it after your question and answers. Mm -hmm. So if you want all already to go to Slido, you can already reply, but I will show the results after. And secondly, I would like to ask now the audience and the participants if there is a question to you, the, uh, Dimitra. So, um, do you have any question for Dimitra on the Diana project and results and uh, this uh, commercial uh, tool and uh, solution that is now available? I have a question myself, maybe uh, to start the discussion. Um, of who are your targeted uh, customers of these services? Uh, we are talking about water authorities, actually. So uh, it depends because the structure is different in every country, let's say. Uh, but water authorities are the main um, customers of our solution. Okay. Not towns, for example, cities or, you know, administration. Um, again, it depends, but it's usually because agriculture is uh, and the water that is used in agriculture is usually handled by organizations that are not in the city, within the city, let's say, urban, let's say, uh, territory. That's why I'm saying water authorities. Okay. Any other question for uh, Dimitra? If not, I will try which, to... Uh, yes? Which is the status of the project now? So, uh, Diana has ended in uh, December and uh, we have uh, launched uh, uh, the various um, applications in the different countries. So, Greece and uh, Spain and Italy are using the Diana, let's say, uh, services. Commercially, I mean, sorry. Okay. In the meantime, that people clear their minds for asking questions, there is one question to you, participants, which is in Slido. And the question is, uh, what are the main challenges and gaps uh, to implement artificial intelligence? Uh, just a second, I move that 
<laughs> solutions, of course. Uh, so if you can go to Slido and reply, I see the numbers uh, uh, going up. So there are 14 now participating. So if you want to still give your feedback, it's still time. And if there are other questions for Dimitra, we can take them now as well. So you can see that uh, it's quite uh, equal, the replies, but there is a, a little uh, more challenges on the data availability, apparently. <clears throat> Any other question to Dimitra? Hello? I, I don't think that there are any other questions. Okay, no, I was just to be sure that I'm still on because... <laughs> no problem. As, um, okay, so I just now stop sharing. It's just a quick poll just to see what are the challenges. I hope in this session we will try to find solutions to this challenges and you will have insights about possible solutions as well and not only problems. So I will now give the floor. What are the, there is a question. What are the so resolution you are providing the data to water companies? A question from the audience to Dimitra, I believe. Yes, uh, I, I will have to check and uh, reply because I, I'm not sure, to be honest. It's a technical question that I, I will have to, to so maybe out. Yeah, Dimitra, if you, if you can reply in the chat when yes. you have the reply, yes. it would be yes. great for the person. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So I will pass the floor now to Javier for uh, the sim for nexus project. And I think there is a little... Uh, a serious game that they have prepared in the project, right? Yes, you're right. Thank you very much. I will start my presentation. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes we can see it. Thank you, Javier. It's okay. Up you have 20, 10 minutes, huh? Okay, thank you. Um, well, uh, yes, this is Javier. I'm responsible for the Smart Management Systems Unit at Eurocat, a uh, technology center in Catalonia. Um, I'm going to present you from a digital perspective the sim for nexus project which uh, looks forward an efficient management of the nexus uh, resources um well the sim for nexus project uh, targets at a resource efficient and low carbon europe uh, where we have research for scientific evidence of the benefits of a sustainable and integrated management of resources considering the water land energy and food under a climate change scenario what we call uh, the nexus okay to that end, we have uh, research for Nexus compliant uh, practices involving the interlinkages between those five elements in 12 case studies, which I will introduce to you later in this presentation. And just to give another short information about the project, this project is led by Wageningen and uh, is made of 26 partners uh, around uh, Europe. Um, if we go to the general idea uh, behind uh, the, the project, is that we realized that when we wanted to face this kind of, of challenges, um, there were obviously previous research done, but it was somehow specialized in a specific areas and not considering other sectors. So what we wanted to do in Sim4Nexus is to move from this silo thinking uh, approach to a holistic one. That means that um, integrate the Nexus, all of the sectors, understanding which are the trade-offs and synergies, okay, uh, in the different policy implementations and this kind of actions that we can take there to prioritize those which are, are viable and valuable across uh, the different sectors and not only one. So we are not prioritizing one specific sector, but looking uh, forward all of them at the same time. Okay. Uh, I will go fast here. I mean, um, so what we are looking for is Nexus compliance practices and, and, and innovations, and this graphic somehow summarizes it uh, quite uh, shortly, in the center we have the resource efficiency, of course, and we are considering uh, variables and, and inputs and uh, considerations around these uh, five elements plus the ecosystems. Okay, and what we are providing is uh, knowledge. Okay, we are uh, creating knowledge about the synergies and trade-offs of these uh, elements of the nexus. This knowledge is being shared, of course, 
then we are providing methods and tools to uh, analyze, to get information, in, uh, to assess impact of the different interventions we are doing in the Nexus so that we can understand it better. So we're providing in, on the one side Nexus methodologies and decision support tools. And of course, all of this is made uh, um, with participatory governance. So we are in, including in this uh, iteration and this uh, research uh, different stakeholders from go from territory, policy makers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there are two main processes to be considered. The first one is the systematic process to understand the interlinkages between natural resources, okay? And the second one is the governance process, okay? Which in includes uh, uh, this attempt to seek cross sectoral collaboration and policy coherence. Policy coherence is a big word in this project. It was probably the most difficult one, okay? To understand, because there were conflicts, you know, when you are using uh, different models and different scenarios, you may think that something is good from the one side and it's not good from the other, or maybe it has different results on different models. So there was a lot of work uh, behind uh, this research. And well, uh, what we uh, were able to do is to make explicit these conflicts and, and provide a solution for them. Okay? Um, well, the disciplines that, that, that we use in behind this uh, were, well, as you may imagine, natural sciences, uh, social sciences, or, of course, uh, the integration of uh, the natural resources uh, uh, management, well, and transdisciplinary approaches. If we go to the case studies, just to make you an idea of what we've done in this, we've done in this project, uh, we have uh, different geographic and time scales analysis. I'm going from regional case studies in Andalusia and Spain, Sardinia and Italy, Southwest and United Kingdom. Uh, and we had also a national level case studies like in, in Greece, uh, the Netherlands, Sweden, Latvia, some transboundary case studies, French Germany and, and Germany and, and the Czech Republic and Slovakia. Okay, and then we had an Azerbaijan case study, a case study considering the, the whole Europe and a case study considering the global, okay, the whole, the whole earth. So let's go to data. Let's go to the systems in behind this. Uh, as Graziana said, yes, uh, we are providing a serious game, some serious games, in fact, and uh, I will follow a top down approach. This is an architecture. Okay, but uh, you can imagine that we have a serious game. What is a serious game? This is the first question. A serious game is a game that is not only intended for having fun, which you may have, of course, but it's also intended that you learn while playing. So while you are playing this game, you are understanding policy concepts, you are understanding the impact, you are this kind of thing. Okay. So what do we offer? We offer a serious game for different case studies, and in there you can face a scenario. That means that you have a series of policy objectives to, sorry, nexus objectives to achieve, uh, a nexus, uh, for example, equilibrium, and some uh, uh, different challenges challenges to face. And how do you do it? You do it um, by implementing policies into the scenario during uh, different time scales, so that you can just play the next step and assess which is the impact of this implementation on your scenario, so that you try to find the equilibrium on the nexus indicators. Okay? To do that, there are uh, three main modules, which, apart from the serious game per se, which are the, the Nexus integration module, the knowledge elicitation engine module, and the semantic uh, repository. Okay? The semantic repository maybe is the easiest one to understand, is where we are putting all the data. And to that end, we are using different technologies, of course, but we will remark that uh, we did uh, uh, an ontology to, uh, as an extension of the SAREF, uh, of the Etsy SAREF uh, ontology, SAREF for water, in fact. Um, so that we can store all the Nexus information on the case studies information. Of course, we are using other kind of databases, but just intended for a specific uh, uses. Um, the semantic repository is, is also intended to be queried by third systems and to integrate more information for third system, from third systems. So we are uh, uh, allowing this uh, by using open APIs, open interfaces. Okay. Um, then we go to the I go to the bottom and I go to the Nexus integration. This is the first step. We had a lot of models, of thematic models, able to compute uh, the, the impact uh, on a scenario when you make a decision. But we had to integrate all of them together. So what we did is, is make use of complexity science approaches to get into this, okay? And for each case study, we built a system dynamics model uh, engine, which were integrated, was, was integrated, sorry, in the knowledge elicitation engine. And what does the knowledge elicitation engine puts everything together? Okay, it, it's, it is able to interact with SDM to once in the game, you make a, a policy implementation, it asks, transforms this 
this whole implementation into input parameters into the SDM, computes the next step, computes the results, and shows and shows it in, uh, to the to the user. Um, this policy implementation translation into input parameters of the SDMs was another great challenge in the project because we wanted to allow for different things, not only changing uh, some uh, performance of some variables and so on, but even we are able to change completely the behavior of one indicator when you are implementing a specific policy. policy. So we did a lot of uh, research on this. So and we developed a methodology so that we can uh, simplify and summarize these behaviors, these implementations, into an Excel file, which is automatically a fit into the system, and it's easy to, to maintain and develop and add more functionalities. I have talked about the repositories, just to uh, add this uh, in case you can you want to check them. We have put uh, several data sets into the Zenodo platform. We have also the data navigation tool and the semantic repository available at this URL, so you can check it and use it if you want. And of course, we have published our ontology under this URL, uh, which is able for you if you need to use it. Available for you. Finally, we have an experiment which is about uh, what happens because some of the models were not uh, public, public, no? So, what happens if we change this data with open data, no? Uh, and that's what we did. We tried to replace a private data with open data. And we want a specific uh, uh, case study, which is the Sardinia Fast Track. Okay, you have one minute. Um, and uh, what we did is, is replace with this data with a satellite based data inventories such as Copernicus and NESA and other open access data, and we get also uh, very good results. Maybe not that precise than the other ones, but very good also, okay? just for, for you. And uh, well, obviously we don't have to play, the, we don't have time to play the game, but I, we've also put here the URL so that you can check it and play it. Please do it because it's really nice. And um, in here you can see the policy cards on the, on the right. These policy cards can be dragged into the timeline. It's the top right corner, okay? Um, and then you can see which policies are implemented and which not. In the middle, you have some indicators of the evolution of the Nexus. There are more indicators on the top left corners. And if and in the uh, left part of the game, you can see, in this case, it's Greece. It's a simplification of the Greece map uh, in which you can see the evolution of the different indi indicators for different regions. Okay? Please check it because it's quite uh, it's nice. We are very proud of it. So it's available for you. I will and share the link in the chat, uh, Javier. Yeah, it's, it's in here also, uh, but yeah, I, I will do it, no problem. And that's all for me, from, from my side. Just uh, thank you for your attention and, and at your disposal if you need anything. Thank you, Javier. Uh, is there any question? I see in the chat that there is already someone who would like to join as a Portuguese, with a Portuguese case pilot. Very good. So I think, Gabriel, you are taking this uh, separately and see how Maria can join the, the cluster or at least uh, be part of uh, the pilot. And uh, Carl is asking uh, uh, about the platform. S4N platform, is it open source, Javier? Uh, yes, it is. It is open source. It, it, it has been published. You can use it. In here, the main efforts are uh, to integrate new models and to build this new SDN. This is very, it's, it's where the challenge is, okay? But yes, yes, you can access it, yeah. Okay. Please contact us in, in case you need more, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other question for Javier on the, the theme for Nexus? No? If not, I will, uh, first of all, I would like to, I will share the, in the chat, the link to the serious game if, in case you want to test it. Maybe mm. not now, because now you, you should listen to the next speaker <laughs> and not, uh, <laughs> not, not do the serious game now, please. <laughs> I should have given the link at the very end of the session, by the way. Uh, just keep it for <laughs> after please. <laughs> now we go to Edgar to listen about the Inoqua project uh, and the result. Thank you, Javier. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Could, could you hear me? Yes, Edgar, we hear you now. Thank you. Okay, yeah, I, I suppose that 
see my screen also? Yes, we do. Okay, perfect. Clearly, uh, thank you for, for giving us the opportunity to present the, the Inoqua project. I am Edgar, researcher on a smart management unit of Eurecat. And Inoqua, whose full name is Innovative Biobased on Site Sanitation System for Water and Resource Saving, is a project of four years. And in this moment, we are in the last year of the project. Uh, okay. Uh, the main the main aim is to design and develop an innovative, patent protected, and scalable, uh, fully ecological sanitation solution available in multiple modular configuration adapted to local context and markets. And for that, uh, during the project, we have built a low cost and nature based solution that uh, has been integrated uh, to perform the whole water treatment cycle. On the right, uh, you can see a picture that, of the full stack of Inoqua solution, and this solution includes uh, different uh, technologies uh, based on, for example, headworms, uh, daphnias, ultraviolet, and solar purification techniques. And, uh, a, 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 uh, and a sub goal, uh, more related to ICT technologies, we have to develop a monitoring and control unit to control the sanitation system. Uh, this, well, uh, this, this solution was based on open hardware and open software, and it's important to remark uh, that it it should be autonomous because the sanitation solution is intended to be deployed in remote locations, which maybe not have an internet connection or, or, or the possibility to visit. Uh, the project uh, is formed by 20 partners, uh, include from Europe and partners from another uh, another continent. For example, we have partners from Turkey, Ecuador, and Peru. Okay. Uh, about the interoperability and data strategy, uh, we cover all the data chain value. We collect the data, we transform, we send the data, we persist, the, persist this, this data, we create uh, new knowledge and, and take decisions no? uh, using this data. Uh, concerning the data strategy, uh, data is collected by the IoT entities. You can see the different IoT entities in the different Inoqua modules. And, and and this data uh, is improved uh, by the IoT entities because the IoT, the IoT entities uh, include edge, edge computing capabilities and apply different techniques of signal conditioning to, to improve the data quality. Uh, once improved the data, they is sent to the gateway by using uh, IoT standards. And the gateway uh, has also edge computing cap capabilities, in this case more advanced, and use these capabilities to take different decisions and generate uh, new knowledge of, of the system, for example, uh, to generate alerts if you are arriving uh, to, to some temperatures because you can kill the, the living organisms or you can uh, take decisions to switch on or switch off the different pumps to, to move the water through the system. Uh, and moreover, it's important to, to, bueno, to remark that it's, the solution is completely autonomous and, and, and persists all the data in the gateway. In the gateway, it's not, it's not essential, the cloud, but uh, we have the possibility to send also the information to the cloud in order to perform the uh, our remote uh, the, to perform remote monitoring of the system. And finally, uh, I want to remark that all the solution is based uh, taking advantage of different uh, open hardware and open software solutions.
about the main uh, highlights or outcomes uh, achieved during the the project as we as we commented previously uh, we have uh, a initial uh, signal conditioning techniques in order to improve uh, the the data the data accuracy the data accuracy uh, this this signal condition techniques uh, has been based on Gaussian distribution of noising and hamper filters and taking advantage of the reference voltage, we have achieved a, an improvement of 61% uh, of, the, of the measurements. Uh, moreover, we have a, a system to, to translate the raw data, uh, that is the voltage and amperage, uh, to measurements. That way, uh, this have all the numerical, this is random, and this... about the about the edge computing capabilities, uh, we have provided a, a system to apply human-like decisions. Uh, this system is uh, has integrated a, a a rules engine that that allow to trigger actions, trigger alarms, for example, to avoid the living organisms collapse uh, by high values of temperature or pH. And also we have included uh, an advanced edge computing capabilities by integrating uh, data-driven models, taking advantage of the PMML uh, standard that provide uh, advanced capabilities to create virtual sensors or, or similar, or for example, to correlate uh, the performance of the system with the measurements. Finally, uh, the architecture, uh, well, no, no, the solution, all the solution, all the, uh, was deployed in 13, yeah, in 13, in 30 demo sites across uh, 11 countries. We have deployed the solution around the, the Europe, in India, in Tanzania, in Peru, and in Ecuador. In the, in the image of the middle, you can see uh, the MCU deployed in the, in the electric panel and on the, on the uh, and, and, and a part of the graphical using interface that is used uh, to monitoring. You can see the different measures that are taken and the control of the pumps. Uh, to sum up, uh, we have provided a, a, bueno, an intelligent architecture uh, based on open source and open hardware for supporting uh, wastewater managers uh, was provided. The use of low-cost, affordable, or cost-benefit water monitoring solutions encourages the digitalization of the rural, remote water sector, or the water sector of underdeveloped countries. The centralized and autonomous smart water service at the equipment sensor level was deployed, encouraging also the water quality monitoring and control of isolated infrastructures. An attended remote uh, water sanitation system were managed by a low cost and open source smart and based smart I based based standard solution. Sorry. Multiple technologies enabled, such as, for example, IoT, artificial intelligence, uh, data science, were combined to standardize, orchestra orchestrate, and boost the value of the water. And the solution was validated in several unattended ecological on-site sanitation systems, integrating heterogeneous sensors and actuators, and addressing water monitoring management needs. And this is all. Thank you very much. Is there a question or a comment, uh, an additional information that you may have on Edgar's presentation. 
And by the way, I, I launched also the question on the slide or in parallel. And the question here that uh, Edgar has prepared for you participants is could open software and hardware encourage the digitalization of the water sector? I don't know if you are all on Slido already, but uh, you may go now to Slido with the code INSPIRE2020 and uh, choosing the room uh, ICT for water. And you may reply to the question if you wish so. And I will put also the results. If I can manage to share my screen, do you see it? Are you still alive, or everyone? Yes, yes, we are yes. seeing the screen now. Yes, we can see it. Okay, give me a sign from time to time that I can speak to the wall here in my room. <laughs> okay, so you are still alive. So the participants, we are now... Uh, we are now uh, around 55 something uh, participants. I, I see only 17 who replied to the poll. So maybe you don't like a Slido, maybe you don't go to Slido often, or maybe you don't want to go. So just to, for me to remind you, just type uh, in your browser slido.com and you arrive to a page where it will ask you a code. The code is INSPIRE2020 and when you are in INSPIRE2020 there is a uh, selection of the room which is ICT for water and then you have the question and you can reply and I see 20 now. But in the meantime you can also raise questions to Edgar if you have one or two. So I just leave you the floor for a minute or so to think about the the questions raised in your ma in your head about Inokwa or in general about the topics we are discussing and we are presenting. So I see twenty one. It's going uh, the digestion after the lunch is difficult. So I think that. Uh, it's not a, a very good timing for a, a session, but still, we are here together, so maybe we can inter interact a little bit more. Okay, so I will stop sharing now, and we go to the next speaker in my list to discover what is fireware for water with Luis. And we see your screen, but we cannot hear you. Are you speaking? Luis, we don't hear you. You have to unmute your, your mic. Now we don't see the presentation anymore. Fabio, can you unmute uh, Luis maybe? Uh, sorry, can can you hear me now? Now yes. But okay, we... yeah. I was not able to to find the to find the the, the button. Okay, yeah, let me share we, again. When we present, we don't see the buttons very easily anymore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now I see, I know it. Yeah. So now you can share your screen again to see your presentation. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me and can you uh, see my screen? No, I can hear you, but we cannot see your screen. Okay, again. But if you want, I can share your presentation if you no, don't. I have it. Share screen. Yeah, we see your screen, but not okay. the presentation. And yet. now let me share the presentation. Yes. Okay. Can you see now? My screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. The floor is yours. Thank okay. You. Uh, sorry, and uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to share with you uh, the Fire for Water project. 
My name is uh, Luis Echeverria Rovira. I'm a researcher mainly focused on uh, artificial intelligence and uh, big data applied to the domains of uh, intelligent resources management, such as uh, water or energy, and also um, the domains of uh, Industry 4.0 or the agri food uh, system. The Fire for Water uh, project is a three years project. Uh, we are still in the first year uh, of execution, and the consortium is composed by uh, 14 partners with a wide uh, variety of skills. We can find from ICT or data analytics experts, water utilities, or partners focused on uh, standardization, IoT, artificial intelligence, big data, social science, or of course, uh, and of course, um, uh, water domain experts. The main challenge that uh, Fire, Fire for Water project tries to focus is the water digitalization and the low level of maturity of the, the water sector concerning the integration and the standardization of ICT solutions, uh, the business uh, processes of these solutions, and how it will be done. Um, well, the, the, the Fire for Water project will link the water sector to Fire which is uh, an open uh, software plat platform, which uh, I will introduce you in the next uh, slide. And how it will be done? By uh, showing its capabilities and the specific potential of uh, its interoperable and uh, standardized interfaces for uh, both uh, water sector and users, such um, cities or water utilities, and solution providers, such uh, private users. Uh, developers or small and medium enterprises. And this will be done through the development of four demo cases and the definition of uh, three demo networks to promote uh, an European and a global uh, network of uh, users. The demo cases will implement the smart applications and will integrate existing legacy systems to address uh, water management challenges and, uh, and the networks will allow to, to showcase somehow uh, the, the fiber for water uh, solution and to create a community of um, potential uh, final users. What is FIWARE or why FIWARE? FIWARE was uh, founded by uh, the European Commission between uh, 2011 and 2016 as a major flagship public-private partnership to support small and medium-sized ent enterprises and developers in creating uh, next, generation, next generation of uh, internet services. Firewall is the main uh, ecosystem for a smart city initiative for cross-domain data exchange and uh, cooperation for the N NGI initiative. It provides an open uh, application programming interfaces, APIs, and uh, generic enablers, enablers for the development of applications in an open source and license free environment for uh, cross domain interoper interoperability, yeah, interoperability and, um, and standardization. Then within Fireware, um, Fireware for Water project will demonstrate a wide uh, variety of uh, Fireware uh, compilant smart applications as a showcase of the water services of the, of the future. This will not uh, reply, uh, replace sorry, the, the, the existing legacy systems in, in the water utilities, but will gradually uh, integrate uh, with them. Finally, uh, the firewall also provides a growing ecosystem of solutions, services, and utilities. And it also has a wide community and an important uh, foundation uh, beyond supporting it uh, to ensure its, uh, its success. Regarding the, the demo cases, uh, the first demo case is uh, located in Greece and it focuses the raw water supply optimization in the, the region of Athens. In this scenario, Fiber for Water project will work to upgrade the supervisory system and uh, digital water strategy through the, the integration of operational sensors and other uh, new real-time surveillance methods. Okay, and the development of, of course, uh, Fiber compilant analytic analytics and models in order to 
analyze the data and provide, and provide operational, operational uh, decision support for uh, first optimization of the water covenants from sources to the treatment plants. And second, uh, it will use as a nearly whirling system for uh, detecting the turbidity to allow the, the treatment plan uh, customize the processes. Then the, um, the second demo case is in France and it covers the improvement of the water distribution system management in the area of Cairns. And it will be done through the different uh, bullet points. The first one is the development of uh, specific connectors for exchanging data between the fewer platform and uh, the advanced legacy, the legacy system for the currently um, active in for the water management. The improvement of the short term water demand forecast, the development of tools uh, for managing the water supply systems in, uh, in real time. And finally, the evaluation and installation of uh, the proto sensors in a full scale on the CANS uh, water network. The, the third demo case uh, deals with the intelligent control of one of the main wastewater treatment plants in Amsterdam in order to optimize its operations by reducing contaminant emissions and reducing also the energy demand and finally increasing the, the capacity of the current treatment plant. All of this task will be done through the analysis of historical and real-time data via upcoming technologies such, uh, for example, uh, artificial intelligence, which will finally result in uh, smart tools uh, supported by uh, these robust and intelligent uh, algorithms in order to um, reduce the emissions, the, the energy demand, and finally, of course, uh, to improve the overall treatment efficiency. And finally, the, the, the last uh, demo case, the four demo case, will uh, deploy around 1,500 smart, meet, smart meters in a specific area in uh, North Devon in uh, the United Kingdoms, which will allow the, uh, the development of modular applications, giving feedback to individual customers and group of customers, of course, about uh, their water use and encouraging them uh, uh, change in uh, behavioral uh, um, underwater settings. And these applications uh, will make uh, use of uh, big data or advanced uh, visualization techniques to show uh, this data from the smart uh, meters uh, at uh, household level. In parallel of the development of uh, the, these uh, four demo cases, three networks will be, will be uh, launched at different levels to assess following different approaches, the potential, the potential and uh, capabilities of the fiber for water portfolio of the smart devices and, and APIs. The first one is at municipality level where the target audience are areas with uh, weak economic conditions that affect their water sector capacity to implement water, wastewater or uh, ecosystem innovations. The second network will focus water authorities to showcase uh, the benefits of uh, fiber for water smart applications and uh, the devices, uh, the devices sorry, for managing uh, water uh, in an integrated way. And finally, the third one will cover uh, fiber innovation hubs, such as uh, European manufacturing, small and medium enterprises, cities, and water managers uh, to create an, an inclusive and continuously growing network of water management innovation hubs. And finally, also to contribute uh, a rapid commercialization of those uh, smart uh, water management solutions through the uh, fiber for water platform for. Uh, uh, smart water management. To finish, uh, which are the, the expected impacts of the, the project? First, interoperability of uh, decision support systems through the identification and use of uh, ICT or water vocabularies and ontologies in uh, view of developing or improving ICT water standards. <coughs> Sorry. Also, the second, uh, an improved decision making on uh, water management, related risk and uh, resource efficient, uh, efficiency through increased uh, real time data. 
The third uh, expected impact is about maximizing uh, the return of invest investment through reduced operational costs for water utilities, improved uh, performance of uh, water infrastructures, and uh, finally, uh, enhanced access to an inter interoperability of uh, the data. The fourth uh, is related to the enhanced uh, public awareness of uh, water consumption and uh, usage settings. The next is about uh, market development of integrated and uh, cyber resilient ICT solutions and systems for uh, smart water management and opening up uh, a digital single market for water services. And uh, the final impact is the implementation of the objectives of the European Innovation Partnership for Water, specifically reducing the environmental um, footprint of the main uh, water dependent activities and improves uh, the resilience to, to climate changes um, and other uh, environmental changes. That's all related for uh, Flywork for Water. If you want more information here, uh, you have some uh, social media. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Luis or Luis? Luis. Luis. <laughs> okay. Uh, is there any question to Luis? There is a, apart from interoperability of systems from an artificial intelligence point of view, which would you say the biggest challenge, most disruptive approach is? It's a question from Javier. I don't know if it's to Luis or to all. Yeah, yeah, to Luis. Okay, to Luis. from interoperability of systems, from an inter artificial intelligence point of view, which would you say what the biggest challenges, most disruptive approach uh, is? When one of the main uh, challenges that we are going to face related to artificial intelligence it's related to uh, the, um, the Amsterdam uh, demo case where here we want to implement uh, artificial and, uh, and autonomous agents based on the reinforcement learning techniques, which will, will, which will um, autonomously and optimally manage the, the wastewater treatment uh, plan for uh, Amsterdam. So this is your biggest challenge for Amsterdam? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something else you want to ask to Luis? Any of you? We are ar ar around 50 now in the in the webinar. That's already still okay. <laughs> and we are still in time, perfectly in time with my calendar, my agenda. So it's fine. I'm happy. So um, if you are all happy with the presentation of Luis, we go to the next one about another project called Score Water. And it's again Edgar presenting, I believe. And during this uh, presentation, I will uh, open also the slide uh, for a question to the participants from Edgar. So uh, just listen to him, but also have an eye on the slide to see if you want to contribute. Thank you, Edgar. Okay, hello, hello everybody again. Uh, I am I am going to present the Scorewater project. Uh, this project is a project of four years. In this moment, we are in a in an initial stage. We are in the in the first year, and basically, the project uh, this project is aimed to enhance the resilience of cities, taking advantage of of water smart service and selling data to exploit it. Uh, we have uh, three different sub goals. Uh, one for each case of a study. Uh, one, in, one for Barcelona, it's, it's mainly focused on exploit the sewage data to enhance the resilience of the city. In the Amer4 case, uh, that is Netherlands is addressed to enhance the flood prevention and climate resilience. And finally, in Gothenburg, is focused on achieving a water safe infrastructures projects. 
uh, we are uh, 14 partners of three different countries, uh, Sweden, Netherlands and Spain. As, as as commented previously in the bueno, in the previous presentation, you is that use you know, the fewer platform to to develop all the project. In this case, Score, Score Water also use this this platform. And uh, yes, this use this platform for the for the three U cases. Uh, and basically the data is collected, processed. Uh, improving the data quality, generating new knowledge and uh, store it. And additionally, the data and new knowledge generated by the platform are published in a data market. Uh, the data market uh, provide uh, discovering and subscription capabilities uh, with the aim of encouraging the, st the stakeholders the use of this data to create new smart water services. Uh, moreover, uh, during the project, we provide some of these smart services, but but we expect that the stakeholders also also take advantage of this data. Which are sorry to interrupt, Edgar. Yeah, Which sorry. Are your main stakeholders that you are talking about. Here, uh, any any people, any company that want to exploit uh, water uh, water data in order to create new applications, new solutions. Also, we can include the municipalities. We can include uh, private companies. All all the people in general, we can exploit it. Okay, good. Just continue. Thank you. Okay, about the data market, uh, the data is standardized and harmonized, uh, taking advantage of the FIWAR platform. Uh, but the reason we are using uh, the NGS uh, LD and uh, JSON LD in order to create the APIs and data models. And to summarize, uh, basically, this platform is used to provide a link between the providers of data or or models or smart models and the stakeholders. It is important to remark that that at the end of the project we want to organize a hackathon no, uh, to to exploit no, uh, all the all the platform and, and and encourage the people to to use it. About the mind outcomes that we have in this moment, during during the first year, we, we have uh, achieved to build uh, six data-driven models, taking advantage of, of historical data. On the one hand, we have three data-driven models related to support the urban resilient strategies. Uh, one model to predict the sedimentation level on C1 system that this is applied to the city of Barcelona and mix the data from infrastructures, uh, citizens' claims, and operational maintenance data. Uh, we have created another model to detect uh, early warnings for water pollution event on construction sites. This is related with the Gothenburg case here. We are monitoring water quality parameters of different uh, water recipients and applying different techniques and algorithms of artificial intelligence to perform this early warning and minimize the impact of the event of the of the pollution events. Um, finally, the other model is a model to perform early warning of water pollution events, but in this case on sewage system and the and the main aim is to detect uh, a spill from industries or restaurants by analyzing the different water quality parameters and applying uh, data science techniques. On the other hand, uh, we have three models for data quality, for no, for quality assurance, because uh, it's very important. No, if you have a, a data market, you have to 
to provide uh, data with a high quality in order to, to be exploited in the future. And for, for this reason, we have created three different models in order to address it. We have a, a model to detect uh, anomalies in the, in the flow pa patterns of the wastewater. In this way, you can uh, validate every day if the data is right or, 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 or not for the future uh, analysis. We have a, another data driven model to detect uh, anomaly uh, urban temperature patterns in the case uh, in the case of Amherford uh, in order to predict the the flood uh, one of the main uh, data sources is the is, is a is a network of sensors of temperature in the city of Amherford and we are applying different techniques in order to ensure that the that the, the different temperatures of the network is is it's all right. And finally, we have uh, another data driven model for detect uh, one water quality sensor is beginning to 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 drift. No, uh, the drift it's an important problem that that happens in the in the, the water sensor and more when you use this type of sensor inside of a of a sewage because it's a very complex uh, environment. And we are uh, implemented a, a, a model in order to detect this drift. And then you can you can you have an alert in order to, to clean this sensor. And basically, this is the job that ha, has been uh, achieved during the first year. And as main conclusions. Uh, we are providing an open source platform uh, adapted to to water environment, integrating heterogeneous sensors, and um, providing a water data market. Uh, it uh, boosts the digitalization of the water sector, can encourage the deployment of flexible and scalable data management and smart water services, and also can encourage uh, the water research and water data exploitation by taking advantage of all the all the data all, all the water data shared also uh, the solution include uh, multiple technology enablers we are working with iot technologies we are working with big data technologies we are integrating also uh, artificial intelligence models to perform the predictions and, uh, and all of this uh, is used to combine all the data, standardize, orchestrate and, and boost the value of the water information. Water data quality assurance is addressed by use the artificial intelligence and data science techniques and this is essential when you provide a, a data market because the quality it's 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 key in order to build uh, future solutions or future smart uh, water. And finally, uh, the power of digital tools uh, such as sensors and artificial intelligence can help us to to advance uh, towards predictive maintenance of the sewer system, enhance the urban flash flood management, minimizing the impact of, of these events, minimize the impact of construction pollution events on, on water recipients, and the, the data quality assurance. And finally, uh, last but not least, a uh, sewage system is an essential data source that to, to understand the cities and their citizens. Uh, we can take advantage of, of this information, the information provided by the sewage system to, to monitor pharmaceutical uh, consumption, waste, waste management practices such as uh, discharge of oils, grease, or, or these type of things and to monitor also the non-adequate habits of the of the citizens. I have a question here, uh, Edgar, if you yes. allow me. Because in this past 
pandemic crisis, uh, we have heard uh, sometimes and some projects are working on this to to use the sewages uh, to to monitor a bit the pandemic uh, trends and the, the, the yes where in the cities uh, are the the cases of uh, yeah. COVID. Uh, do you do you have experience on this? Did you? also adapt a bit your your researches and your your activities to the pandemic situation yeah we are going to uh, perform a, a small adaptation in order to monitor uh, the pandemic in the in the city of barcelona we cannot do a a, a full a full uh, analysis because uh, we cannot the 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 time and the money to perform this analysis, but the intention is to dedicate one part of our, uh, our, our forces to, to do it, to check, you know, the, to check the, how, okay. the, how the pandemic uh, uh, evolved in the city of Barcelona during the, during the, the sampling. Yeah, thank you. And uh, is there an, any other question for Edgar on score water? Okay, if there are the question to you, ah, yes, this is me. <laughs> if you now go, if you now go to to Slido, if just to wake up a bit, um, you can see that there is a question that uh, Edgar for you participants. And the question is, which is the most relevant benefit of sewage mining? Uh, so are you all on Slido? Because I see 10 people already replied, but we are much more in this session. So maybe some of you would still like to contribute and to reply. I can share now the results uh, to see a bit the trends. Do you see it? 12 persons, 14. Yes, I have little time to, to reply. And Edgar, maybe you want to comment the replies uh, as soon as they come. Uh, well, here it's, it's, a, well, it's an opinion, no? uh, depending of the, of the of the interest of the different stakeholders, you can think that it's better not to advance uh, towards prescriptive management. But maybe some some people, no, the, the people more related with with health, think that it's the best option is to dedicate efforts, no, to to advance uh, towards the understanding, no, and detect the the pandemic outbreaks, taking advantage of the of the sewage. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's only to to know, no, the opinion of mm -hmm. the different uh, people. Yeah, I see eighteen participated. Maybe we can we can go to the next uh, presentation. Maybe um, so I will stop sharing it. But we have only one hour and a half to stay together, and I would like to give really the opportunity to all of the speakers who prepared themselves to really have the time to present what they would like to share with you. And now is the turn of Aitor. I, I, I'm sure I pronounced wrongly your name. But... <laughs> no, no, it, it is perfect. <laughs> <Got you. laughs> I, I know it is quite difficult. Do you say Aitor? No, Aitor? Oh. Yeah, well, in Spain, there, there is difficult to pronounce it because of my, my, my name in, and what pronounce is Aitor. But here in Catalonia, <laughs> there is a little bit of change, and most of people call me Aitor. So <laughs> I think in English it's quite similar. So don't worry about it. <laughs> Okay, now we can hear and see your presentation. So it's the floor is up to you then. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So uh, this last presentation, I hope you are awake for now. Uh, we are talking about interoperability and interoperability inside of the ICT for Water perspective. I'm Aitor Corchero. 
and I am the leader uh, of the action group of the interoperability and standardization. So, a little bit of background around interoperability in water. I can also trans uh, transboundary to energy. Also, it's that there exists in the city, in the smart city, a lot of systems, a lot of distributed system, but in somehow interconnected. Interconnected not only in the domain as well as Gabriel said in the first presentation, is interconnected into the different value chains that the water or the flow of water is living in the cities or uh, in the entire environment. So uh, there exists a, a, a non-connection and this derives in a non-availability availability of, of, of connected data to take a, and as also, recording the first question of the of the presentation is yes. Most people here uh, request more data about availability, about uh, water, about energy, about everything. There is not a lack of, of data. It's lack of open data around uh, Europe. So, what is other things that we leave about this uh, lack of open data, lack of uh, connected data? This uh, generates lack of cross domain digital services in terms of we are not able to connect the different value chains we are not able to offer different service digital services to the to the, to the users to the companies and to the uh, relevant scientific fields or stakeholders policy making etc this also generates a fragmentation in the sector that we need to to to, to avoid it to reduce it in order to uh, to combine the data to make the data more uh, interoperable, available over uh, to the society to, to 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 make more transparent on on that, and I will connect this with a with a current green deal uh, strategy on interoperability that comes to make the data free flow uh, over over different organizations and make more data available for for, for the public. Also, uh, there exists some kind of uh, heterogeneity in the digital infrastructure. This works again, like like in silos, like in different platforms that there are kind of vendor locking, or even if they are open source, they are with the custom data data models, etc. That impedes to 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 uplift this data to to the public, and also all of these interconnected between them generate a little bit of a lack of a generation at the end of new business models in terms of if we can offer to my if I'm a water company and I offer to my users, consumers, new, for example, real-time data about the, the consumption, about the uh, malfunction or mal uh, usage of the water, I am generating new uh, communication with the user and also I, I can improve my business models inside the company, modernize this business model and transform water sector in some kind to a more digital environment. So focusing on water domain and what uh, the things we are living on, on, on the cluster. There exists a lot of projects uh, that take part of, of, of the cluster. And these lot of projects, and here we saw in the previous presentation some of them, uh, there are liturgy in the, in, in, in the kind of data, in the scope of the project. For example, we have data about uh, remote metering, smart remote metering in the city. We have uh, data about the water quality. We have data about leakage, sewage, uh, not only in urban areas, but also in rural ones. We have also uh, projects regarding water quality in different biting areas. And also, not only is uh, every project talks about water, but also the link between water and energy. Uh, as for example, for example, predictive maintenance to make more efficient the distribution of water. More ten years projects are so well, first with Xavier that was in say for Nexus that connect every part of the Nexus under a common uh, environment to interlink the different variables and then generate efficient policies. Or also a, a little more transversal ones with cybersecurity or risk management that covers the, the part of cascading effects from transport from energy, but only, but also from uh, natural events that could happen and could affect the water infrastructure itself. So 
Here, it's all about data. It's all, not only about data, data availability, but also to connect the different aspects, digital and natural, of the, of the, of the water domain. So in terms, and we are open more this uh, cloud or this, uh, so there exist a lot of uh, standards, there exist a lot of initiatives, and there exist currently a lot of, lot of digital open data models to, to, uh, to deal with in the, in the water domain. One of them, there are, for example, HCI that in Europe is leading uh, reference architectures that we saw, like uh, NGS ILD or uh, the ontology of Shadow for Water that we talk a little bit later on. There exists the ICT for Water cluster with the roadmap that Gabriel explained in the first presentation about the strategy uh, in digital water in Europe. And there exists also uh, in, in the United States in collaboration with Europe, with Inspire, Africa, Copernicus, the Open Geospatial Consortium. Uh, offering sensor things uh, and in terms of water, also uh, a reference architecture to, to share your spatial data. Here, focus on, on our work in, in the ICT for water cluster. Uh, this is the, the roadmap, uh, and we are focused on two main tasks inside the Interoperability and Standardization Working Group. First of all, is the generation of, of a catalog that was held in two, uh, 2018, and now we are uh, in the in the way of uh, making the open data of making a common languages to represent water data and put it for the different projects from the different european community to uh, to uh, generate to uh, generate this data to um, consume it to uh, generate test beds and to uh, train the new or future digital services. The role, uh, the roadmap, a specific roadmap for the action group started on 2018 with the catalog, and we will go beyond 2023. And during this time frame, we will mm, try to cover and to expose the data to generate data catalogs and to offer roadmaps, guidelines to make data more interoperable and to bring the water sector semantic interoperability. First of all, in the first task, we develop the semantic standardization of landscape. There is one version of line online where there is a catalog of some standards, some initiatives, some directives of water and some reference architectures just to know that the water line is in that in digital terms. And this is our initial point. During these past years, we focus on elaborating, delivering a ontology, a semantic model to represent the water data in the different perspective. In that terms, we Starting with the identification of the requirements, we collaborate with HCI in their standardization, in their inception, and finally, we will publish it during this uh, month. For this year and future directions, we are currently working on the harmonization of data and in terms of harmonization also of architectures, in terms of solid for water and fiber, also we want to expand the adoption of SAR for water and we in, in cooperation with the different uh, projects, last projects on, on, on water domain, on SAR for water and fire, we are able to elaborate a water open data catalog of data to show the different entities, to represent the different entities, the different data and make it open for the general public. Uh, this is a huge, huge effort and inside of this, we have a specific actions of small working groups on IoT, on Inspire and Copernicus, on risk management, on water quality, and a lot of more, and more of them. And to finally, the intention is to elaborate some kind of mashups, some interfaces to share this, this data and to make easy the data exploration of, of the water domain. And of the future in the, my last minute is also to um, 
make this data interconnected, make uh, bring real evidence on water interoperability, and also more important, as also the audience is aware of, is just to generate curated data and promote the generation of new, new analytics and services. So just to finalize, my remark is just to, we need to offer relevant water data to sustain data analytics. We need to be aware that there exist standards and we need a standard that, uh, standardized data change mechanisms, a source, common data exploration and facilitates visualization and generate of services. And also interoperable data will permit stable cross-domain synergies and enhance decision-making framework. So thank you very much. And if you have questions, please raise up. Thank you, Aitor. Uh, is there any question for Aitor at this time? It's 3.40, so we are well in time. But I see that the number of participants decreased in the meantime. We are only 37 now. But still, if you have a question for Aitor, is now the moment. Question or comments or ideas? Or critics also, if you want. Yes, I say comments. <laughs> you know, comments are fine. <laughs> can be positive or negative. Uh, so I perhaps, perhaps I, I thought could could make a, a, a summary of the progress of the water of, in the cluster regarding to interoperability because we start with this this problem from the very beginning mm. and we, we have been involved in several troubles no with, with particular with with inspired deployment OGC. You know the 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 law yes. of, the, of the standards, the people that if it, they use it or not, these kind of things, no? Yes. Uh, well, in fact, as as a summary uh, and up to open the discussion, my experience or, or experience uh, also on the, there is a common uh, trajectory for all of the projects is that uh, the standards are a little bit uh, cumbersome in terms of. For example, I deal with the OGC, and there are uh, op there are open models, and these open things generate complex the generation of complex data models, a lot of headers in the in the data change. For example, in, in terms of SPI, happens something similar. Uh, also, we need to make compatibilities between, for example, OGC. Uh, inspired or as for now, I am involved in several roles for converging NGS ILD and SARE for water. And there is in the way, there is a lot of uh, discussions. In, there is a lot of visions about, about, the, about, about the, the representation of the data. And we are the things that we are trying to, to make a response in, inside the, the interoperability and decision working group. We are working on these aspects also, right? These, these different visions and these different things to uh, model, uh, for example, geospatial data and other things. Thanks. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Thank you, Aitor. Gabriel, you may want to conclude with some words about the overall session and. Uh, and closing remarks. Okay, first of all, thanks to all the people. I think that around 40 is still now, it's it's a good number, an excellent number, okay? Uh, and thank you very much for being with us during the whole presentation. This is only a, a very small sample of the projects of the cluster, okay? We have projects in, in several domains that goes from the typical ones in the water cycle or in the water treatment, water distribution and so on. But we have been incorporating lastly a lot of in other domains like agricultural space and different things. Uh, for us, it's very important to try to have a, a common view uh, in, in the way that we have to manage the water resource. We, we all of us know that the water is a critical resource we had to manage in a very good way.
this critical resource. We need the, the, the digital tools are tools to manage that. We need the knowledge from the domain in order to help with these tools to improve this knowledge. I think that we, we have a very good community, an excellent community. I want to remark that because most of the projects are what, great, uh, performs great collaborations, okay? We have a very open approach. We think that this is important. Everyone is, is the leader of the cluster, okay? I used to say this from the beginning in 2012, okay? And this is important in order to build synergy, which is the important thing. Thanks to all the speakers, they have been clear in regards to their projects, okay? That's important for also. And that's all, Graciana. I think that we, we are open always, and if you have any other question, you have our information, our contacts, and you can contact with us at any time. Yes, thank you, Gabriel. I think that uh, I had a very last question on Slido, which uh, for the, the, the ones who are still with us, who you can maybe go there and just reply to this quick question to just leave you and leave us with a sense of what you have learned during this half and one hour and a half spent with us. And the question to you is really, what is the level of new discoveries and relevant information that you take with you after this webinar? And um, I see the number growing, two, three people uh, just continue reply for a minute. So we have an overview on the very few still here, but still, still you can, we have a, we have a view on what was, and I, I will share it now. Uh, just for you to see and just to conclude our afternoon together. Uh, okay, so out of from one to five, I think 63% voted that it's quite good that you, you leave us with the discoveries and information and you take with you that for the future work that you have ahead. And uh, I'm happy because it was one of the objectives just to, to discover new projects and solutions and uh, the way of working on, on the interoperability on standards on in, with Internet of Things, with the artificial intelligence and all these digital uh, 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 tools and, um, and enablers that we have for these uh, relevant challenge of digitalizing the water sector. This is it from my side. I think I will thank all the, the speakers. I will thank all the participants and I will thank our host, Fabio and the, the GRC and our colleagues from DG Environment and the GRC who was co-organizing this uh, event. And uh, just wishing you a nice weekend and uh, stay safe. Thank you, Graziana. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you very much, Graziana, and all. Bye bye. Thank you. Take care. Th th thanks a lot.